Well, greetings and salutations, everybody. My name is John Campia. Welcome to my YouTube channel. And uh, I wanted to put together this little video to talk about really, he's been often called the king of the sweaties, which is true, but I looked at him as even bigger than that. He was the king of fandom. I just want to talk a little bit about John Schnepp and uh, what it is he has meant to me, what it is he has meant to fandom, uh, what it is he has meant to all of us, uh, what he stood for, what he represented to all of us. And you know what? I, I haven't planned. I'm just going to be straight with you. I haven't planned this out. I haven't, you know, chart us out and programmed this video. Well, this is what I'm going to do in this video. I, I just thought we would sit here and talk for a couple of minutes and look at some pictures and talk about uh, John Schnepp. Now, I just recently came back from Comic-Con and it was weird for everybody. Now, I'll, I'll just give you a little bit of background. And I shared a bit of this on, on the John Campus show earlier. Um, there are a number of us who had the luxury of knowing what was happening with John and the fact that we had lost John Schnepp um, like over a week ago. Like as you guys saw in, in Holly's updates and the Herculean strength and grace by which Holly Payne, John's longtime partner, his fiance. Um, I, I believe they were together for 16 years, if I'm remembering correctly. But the amount of Herculean level of strength and grace that she has shown through this and the endurance she has shown has been nothing short of inspirational. Um, and it, it, just, it just can't be overstated how inspiring she's, she's been. And anyway, a lot of us found out over a week ago that about the, the damage that, that Schnepp had suffered as a result of the stroke and, and really what that meant. And that they were keeping him on life support. And and Holly, ugh, the grace that which she showed, you know, you know, giving everybody a chance to come and say goodbye, working through difficult decisions. It was, again, I'll just use the word inspirational. It was inspirational to watch. So when the official announcement came, I believe it was on Friday morning while we were at Comic-Con. Uh, it caught a lot of people, a lot of you guys by surprise. There were a number of us who, who already knew and, and we were braced for it and we knew. But it was still really odd being at Comic-Con um, without a John Schnepp. I think everybody at Comic-Con felt that. It just, it wasn't the same without John Schnepp, you know. And and for me, I was staying at this house that the last time I had booked this house, it was for me and my uh, Film HQ crew, of which John Schnepp was one. And it was the same house. And I hadn't been in that house since John Schnepp was with me. And I didn't do a lot of posting or sharing from Comic-Con about everything. I, I just wasn't ready or wanting to do that at the time. But one of the pictures here was one of my favorites that I had ever had with Schnepp. Was me, was him, we were kind of playing out this troll under the bridge thing. And you know, he's up there on the stairs looking at this really worried face. And I'm like this little troll under the bridge. And it's always been one of my favorite pictures. And um, you know, I, I sat there and as, as I was looking at that same stairwell two years later, um, I just, I took another picture and I thought, you know, instead of me getting on and recording all these videos, basically just saying everything everybody else has already said, I, I thought I'd just share this, this picture and um, it just kind of fell. And so the entire, you know, weekend at Comic-Con was kind of bittersweet because I, I was there at Comic-Con, I was with my wife and with some dear friends. And, and, you know, knowing the last time I was here was with Schnepp and I would walk by his bedroom, the room that was his and Holly's bedroom. And it was rough. I'm not going to lie. It was rough. But I want to talk about Schnepp and a little bit of, you know, the history of Schnepp. Again, this is going to be a boring video for sure. But I mean, I just want to talk stories. And I remember the first time I met John Schnepp. And it was really the first time I'd ever even heard of John Schnepp was we were already doing AMC Movie Talk. And Guardians of the Galaxy had just been announced. They were going to do this movie, Guardians of the Galaxy. Now, I was aware of Guardians of the Galaxy. I might have read a couple of issues, but I knew next to nothing about Guardians of the Galaxy. Nobody knew anything about Guardians of the Galaxy, right? And so I get a hold of this mutual friend of John Schnepp's and mine who ran this great event called Comic Book Sunday in, uh, in Los Angeles. Anyway, I get a hold of this friend. And I'm like, do you know anybody that knows a lot about, like, do you know a lot about Guardians of the Galaxy? And he's like, you know what? I got the guy for you. Because I wanted to bring somebody on the show to talk about Guardians of the Galaxy who knew a lot about Guardians of the Galaxy. So this mutual friend of ours goes, I know the guy. I know the guy. 
He's really opinionated, which is, you know, obviously the best thing about him because he's really opinionated, but I think you'll love him. This guy knows everything about even the most obscure comic books. He knows Guardians of the Galaxy inside out and backwards and blah, 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 blah. His name is John Schnepp. I'm like, okay. He goes, you probably never heard of him, but have you heard of Metalocalypse? I'm like, oh yeah, I've heard of Metalocalypse. He goes, he directed a whole bunch of Metalocalypse. I'm like, oh, okay, well, that's that's great. And he knows a lot about comic books. And he's like, totally knows everything about comic books. So he gives me um, John Schnepp's contact information. And I reach out to him. I'm like, hey, you know, this is who I am. I'm running this little show and we want to talk about Guardians. I heard you were doing it. He writes back, yeah, man, this sounds great. Just give me the details. Now, I'm always nervous about putting somebody on camera. Uh, that I've never seen on camera before. So I do a little bit of online stalking and I find a, a, like a Kickstarter video that he did. There's not a lot of, there wasn't at the time a lot of video of him online. So the biggest thing that I came across was this Kickstarter video he had done, uh, getting this animated movie of his put together. It wasn't Death of Superman Lives. And I remember like, hey, this guy's got like some real on camera charisma, right? So I, I'm like, yeah, 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 let's bring him in. Let's bring him in. So he, I remember, I'll never forget this. We were still in the broom closet days at AMC. We're, re, we're literally shooting the show out of this storage closet. And I remember, there's a shot of the storage closet that we were in. I remember Schnepp shows up and he had this assistant with him. I later found out, not a lot of people knew this about John Schnepp. John Schnepp has never had a driver's license. He never had a driver's license. And I guess the assistant was there, just really was his, his ride. <laughs> it was driving him to and from where we were at AMC because he was living in Hollywood and uh, our AMC studio was in Burbank. So John Schnepp walks in, much bigger than I was anticipating. He's a big man. I mean, John Schnepp was a big, big dude. And he walks in, he's, yo, man, what's up? And it's like this really boisterous, very socially confident dude, right? And like, we're just, we're just going to talk about this. Like I'm running through the show with him. He goes, yeah, that sounds cool. Like, okay, great. And we sat down and anyway, we did that show that day and he and I just kind of walked out of the studio. I, I walked him out of the studio after we were done. And what I was instantly taken with was what natural, great charisma, knowledgeable charisma. That's rare. You get a lot of people who are knowledgeable, but they have no on-camera charisma. You get a lot of people with great on-camera charisma, but no knowledge. And John Schnepp was that mixture of knowledgeable charisma. And I recognized it like right away. And so he and I walked out onto the, onto the deck of the AMC uh, theater there. And we just started talking for a few minutes about how that was great. Like it was a really good episode. And he said, yo, man, listen, I love doing that with you. If you ever want me back, just let me know. And I'm like, dude, I thought you were amazing. I mean, like you're, you are so natural. I said to him, you're so natural on camera and stuff like that. And I thought we had a really good on camera chemistry. And, and he thought so too. And we said, okay, well, well, let's, let's stay in touch. We've got to do this again. And so we did do it again and we did do it again. I mean, and we went from everything like, Every, every inside the AMC closet, it wasn't always convenient for him to travel down. Cause again, Schnepp never had a driver's license. So sometimes we would Skype in, you guys remember this, the, the Skype days. So he would, just, and it was awful because I remember the Skyping stuff was awful because I remember at the time, not only were we in this broom closet at AMC theaters, there was no internet. So we were an internet outfit and we had no internet in the building. I kid you not. We had no internet in that storage closet where we were doing AMC. So what we had to do was we would go to Sprint and get the mobile Wi-Fi hotspot boxes. And the mobile Wi-Fi hotspot box was our internet. So we were using 3G and 4G mobile internet as our internet connection. So you can imagine trying to do a show using mobile internet connection and bringing in a dude on Skype and so quite often this, his Skype signal would go out or would get really choppy or go out of sync, whatever. But even though John Schnepp was coming in over Skype and it's all choppy sometimes, whatever, he was still so great. Like people loved seeing him on there. And it wasn't long after that, that it just, you know, he and I just sat down and he said, look, I'd love to be a part of this. And I said, I want you a part of this. And we just kind of made a term permanent thing. John Schnepp became a permo member of the uh, AMC team. And it was 
awesome. And, and it was great. And it kind of ushered in when Schnepp Comp came on, it ushered in one of my favorite eras of the AMC era. And I mean, that was a time when it was really for the longest time, it was me, it was uh, Amy Rose, it was Dennis, and it was Schnepp. And that to me was like probably my favorite era. Um, this particular group of people and everybody brought something so different to the table and it was just amazing. And, you know, we just kept growing and growing and growing and it, it obviously evolved into other things as well. But uh, John Schnepp was a big part of that. He was a huge part of that. And, you know, it became, came to the part point where I just wanted to do like a lot more with him and he loved our on-screen chemistry together. We did start doing a lot more stuff together. And I'll be honest with you, one of the most, my favorite things that I've ever done in my career. I've moderated panels in Hall H. I've done things, you know, on a lot of different movie sets, all that kind of stuff. One of my, when I think back, one of the greatest honors I ever had in my career was John Schnepp came up to me and he was just finally getting ready to release his documentary, The Death of Superman Lives, What Happened? And he was doing a two-night premiere at, I believe it was the Egyptian Theater in, uh, in Hollywood is where he was doing it. And I remember John came up to me and said, hey, look, um, I've got Kevin Smith, the Kevin Smith. Kevin Smith is going to moderate the Q&A for the first night, for the big premiere night. But we have a second premiere night the next night. And, you know, I hope you don't mind, but we asked Kevin to do the first one. But would you like to do, do the moderating for the Q&A for the second one? I'm like, wait a, minute, wait a minute. First of all, you don't have to apologize for putting Kevin Smith in front of me. That's perfectly fine. I would have done the same thing. I was just so honored and humbled that he asked me to, yeah, to moderate this panel with him and Holly. And they had their editor uh, there as well. And I'll never forget that night. It, it was... Like with all the stuff that I've done with different studios or all the different stuff I've done on different movie sets and whatever, honestly, functionally, one of the most things that I, I was most honored ever doing was that John Schnepp asked me to moderate the Q&A on the second night of his premiere. Kevin Smith did the first night, totally got it. No problem with me. But honestly, I consider that probably the thing I feel the most honored by. Like you, you look back on your career and you things you feel really honored by this, 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 and this. The fact that this is how much I respected John Schnepp. The fact that he and Holly asked me to moderate this thing that was so special to them. I just felt so floored. And I remember going in that night, I was actually a little bit nervous. And my wife, Anne, was like, you never get nervous. Like you're most comfortable in front of thousands of people. Why are you nervous about this? I, I just think because I think this is a really big deal. And I was completely honored and humbled by it. And it's just one of the biggest moments. And I loved collaborating with John Schnepp. You know, he and I collaborated on a whole bunch of stuff. And we would constantly sit down and talk about ideas and how things are working. And just getting John Schnepp's life philosophy was always amazing. And I'll say this. There are a lot of people I've worked with in my career. And there are people you work with in your career that you think made you better. And there are people who you work with in your career that you think sharpen you. And I certainly have a long list of people that I've worked with over the years from AMC onwards that definitely made me better, that definitely sharpened me. But there's very few people that you can truly look back on in your career and say beyond those things, beyond they made me better and beyond they sharpened me, there, was li there are people that you can honestly look at and say, and there's very few of them that you can say, I learned from that person. There are only a couple of people that I think I can honestly say I learned from. Lots who made me better, lots who sharpened me, but John Schnepp was one of those guys that I learned from. And it wasn't technical stuff that I learned from him. I knew all the technical, it wasn't any of that. It wasn't the, the business or industry stuff. I learned from him as a philosopher, like his outlook on life, entertainment, art, fandom, the, the place they have and, and the place they should have and all that kind of stuff. I could listen and you could ask anybody that's worked with Schnepp. Schnepp could wax poetic about that stuff for hours and he was amazing at it. 
He had a passion and a love for art, for the place and the importance of the place of art in our culture, society, and in our lives. He had a passion for fandom and its role in art. Like to him, it wasn't like art was one thing and fandom was another thing. He saw those two things were interconnected forever. Fandom and art are like interconnected for all of eternity. And it was that way of thinking and that way of looking at things that I think made him one of the most charismatic and knowledgeable people we've ever had on camera, whether it's on YouTube space or on television or what have you. It was that unique perspective that he had of always understanding that art and fandom were inseparable. And you could see that in his passion and you could see that in his excitement and you could see that in his joy and you could see that in his sweatiness. And that made him very unique. It made him so unique. And somebody that I can honestly say, every time you got a chance to talk to him, you learn something. And again, you can't say that about a whole hell of a lot of people. Anyway, I'll go on to a couple other pictures here. Anyway, as you know, John Schnepp came on the team and we continued to grow and build and grow. And we added more team members and continued to grow. And I'll forget, it, it hit this real great pinnacle a couple years ago when we were still at AMC and we were hitting a hundred million views. It was, we were about to hit the channel's lifetime, lifetime span. We were going to hit a hundred million views. And we had this great hundred million view party. I'm sure a lot of you guys watched it. A lot of you, we had this great live studio eyes. We broadcast it live and everything. And here, first of all, Schnepp was obviously a big part of the evening. I don't know if you can, let's take a closer look at Schnepp there. Schnepp was hammered that night. <laughs> Schnepp was hammered that night. And I don't think he didn't intend to. I think he just took it. We all had, we had some drinks behind stage. And I think Schnepp didn't realize how strong some of the drinks were. Because I don't think he intended to, to drink a little too much. But he, he could start to tell that he was starting to get hammered. Even when we were taking photos. Like backstage. I don't know if you can tell from Schnepp there. He was having a good time. And when Schnepp got a little bit tipsy. Some people are bad tipsy. Like some people you don't want to be around. When they get tipsy, because some people get obnoxious when they're drunk or get mean when they're drunk. When Schnepp started getting a little bit tipsy, it's just that like th that magnetic enthusiasm and hilarity just got amplified when he got a little bit tipsy. And that night he just got a little bit tipsy. But one of the really cool things is it never stopped him from engaging. And I'll forget that night. Like he was going around. And Schnepp, because we had like hundreds of people there at, at our 100 million view party, but Schnepp would go around and make sure to take pictures with everybody that wanted a picture with him. Like it didn't matter. It didn't matter that by that point in the evening, he was getting exhausted and tired. It didn't matter. Anybody that wanted a picture with Schnepp, he was going to be there and he was going to stay on that floor and he was going to go person to person and talk to everybody that wanted to talk to him, take a picture with everybody who wanted to take a picture with him. And that was just him. That, that's what he would do. He would go around and talk to everybody that wanted to talk to him. And I think that is just a, another testament to like this undying enthusiasm he had and his understanding of the interconnectedness between art and fandom. And understanding there can be no John Schnepp the artist if it wasn't for John Schnepp the fan and if it wasn't for other fans of the fandom. And he saw that all in connect, interconnected and it showed just by the way he would meet people and take, take time to take pictures with everybody. He was amazing. And it was in that that I also was kind of sitting at his feet and learning from him. And I learned a lot about fandom from him. And I learned a lot about the interconnected of art and fandom from him. And a lot of the philosophies that I have today about a lot of the philosophies I hold today about fandom and art are rooted in lessons I learned from John Schnepp. And, you know, a lot of people would ask me quite often, you know, is he the same person off camera that he is on camera? Because quite often, and I'm going to tell you, I know a lot of the YouTube guys, a lot of them, a lot of the really big ones. Not all of them are the same people off camera as they are on camera. That's not necessarily a bad thing. Not at all. I'm not saying that's a bad thing. I'm not trying to say that as if that's a bad thing. But, you know, there's your on camera, your professional, your on camera persona. And then there's who you are off camera. I'm telling you what, John Schnepp was the same guy 
What you saw on camera, I mean, like, even in his biggest, most boisterous rants he'd have on camera, he was having those same rants off camera. And he would say them the exact same way. That enthusiasm, that passion, that energy, that hilarity. He was the same guy. So even, like, I remember this one night, I'll never forget this night, it was at our place. We, we had everybody over to watch the Oscars at our place. And I don't know why I lost the picture there, but I did. There's one picture. Oh, there's the other one. Okay. So... We have this thing, oh, it's going to time out. But anyway, we had this picture of, of us at my place at the Oscars. And I just, I mean, if you look at his face again, I mean, that was him off camera, not doing anything, just taking a quick picture. And at my place, as we were all getting together to watch the Oscars, he was the exact same guy. There was no veneer to John Schnepp. There was no outer shell to John Schnepp. There was no on-camera persona of John Schnepp. What you saw with Schnepp was what you got. I mean, that was him in his purest form. And some people, because he's so funny on camera and so boisterous and so passionate on camera, you know, some people just have a hard time believing that, that he's the same dude. One of my favorite John Schnepp stories. And to, I think to a lot of people, this isn't even funny. To me, I just about died. John Schnepp and I were in Burbank, out in the streets in Burbank. I can't remember exactly where we were. Um, but we're walking around Burbank and there were some other people there with us and some guy, it's hard to miss John Schnepp in a crowd because he was such a big dude, but somebody comes walking up and it often, especially in Burbank, a lot of people come walk, would recognize us in the streets, would often come up to us and say, Hey, you know, like the show, blah, 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 and get pictures, whatever. But this one time this dude came up to Schnepp and I'll never forget. And they go, Oh, because they recognize Schnepp from a distance and like, Oh my God, I love I, you know, watch a show all the time. Man, I love your character. <laughs> As if he was some sitcom character, right? Like, like that guy that he portrays on camera couldn't possibly be the real guy. Because no human being is that passionate and that boisterous and that that out there. And John Schnepp was. And I'll just never forget when the guy came up. And we, we told that story in our office all for years. Remember that time that dude came up? And it's like, Schnepp, oh my gosh, I love your character on the show. Love your character? I just... Again, I'm sure that's not coming off as funny, but oh my God, you had to be there. It, it was absolutely hilarious. So anyway, let me backtrack a little bit to one of the other big key highlight moments. Maybe one of the smartest decisions I ever made was John Schnepp had now been a part of the team for a while. And I decided that I wanted us to have this show. I wanted to start a new show that was going to be weekly that was summing up and talking about all the news in the world of comic book movies. And maybe even talk a little bit of comic book television if we wanted to. But I wanted a show that could not just be about the movies, but actually, you know, bring a little bit, show a little bit of the connection. Not focus on comic books, but show some of the connection between comic books and the comic book movies as well. Talk about the big comic book move, wrapping up the week, and I think we're going to call it Heroes. And... It was going to be one of the first weekly shows that we were going to do. And I remember I approached Schnepp and I said, Schnepp, you're the guy who's got to host this. I'll be on it. That's fine. But you need to host it. I can't host it. You'd be better for this. And I remember he was apprehensive at the time. He had some apprehension about it. Not because he didn't, we didn't have confidence in how much he knew. He had like, for whatever reason, he questioned whether or not he could quarterback a show. You know what I mean? And because that's a different skill set. It is. Quarterbacking a show is a bit of a different skill set. And he had some doubts that he could do it. And I'm like, look, you have so much natural charisma. You have so much natural energy. You have so much natural enthusiasm for this. It will carry you. Believe me, you'll figure out all the quarterbacking stuff. And until you do, your just natural, real, authentic, organic enthusiasm for this will carry it. Don't you worry about it. Do it. And he was never not going to do it. He was just nervous about it. And I remember when we did our first episode of Heroes, he crushed it. And he only got better and better after that. And, you know, he would always come to me after the first five or six episodes. He would always come to me. And it's like, okay, so what did I do here? Blah, blah, blah. How do I do this different? And I'm like, dude, honestly, you're doing awesome. Here's a little point here. Here's a little point there, whatever. But you are so naturally good at this. It's crazy. And sure enough, like after that, he never asked me anymore. He knew what he was doing and he knew he knew what he was doing. And he carried Heroes to being one of the most popular shows that we did. 
and it became a flagship for John Schnepp. I, I think Heroes became a, a flagship for John Schnepp and introduced a lot of people to John Schnepp. And whether it was, you know, it was that, or I remember we did, I think this picture is from the 24 hour marathon. Do you guys remember that? We did this 24 hour marathon for uh, relief in the Philippines when the Philippines had that massive typhoon. And I think this was, this was at my place. I set up a studio. We called my place. I had a spare bedroom at my place and we called it studio B. I think I did mailbag from there. And whenever we did some things that we just needed a solid internet connection from or some stuff we didn't need the studio for. We would go to my place and do it in Studio B. And we did Studio B and John Schnepp was a champ. He did so, I think other than me, he did more hours than anybody else on that thing. Uh, and he was great. He was awesome. I know that was a lot of people's first introduction to John Schnepp. A lot of people were first introduced to John Schnepp through the Superman thing. I, oh, I don't have a Superman graphic here. I should have. But I remember when we did, we went in and watched Superman, uh, Man of Steel. We went in and watched Man of Steel, and then we immediately came out. It was John Schnepp, myself, and Clark Wolf. And we immediately came out of theater, into the studio, and recorded our Man of Steel review. And it's funny because a lot of people to this day that would follow myself or follow Schnepp would say, we first found you guys from that all-time infamous Man of Steel review. It's still crazy how many people today still say that they first found us through that Man of Steel review. And it was in that little closet. It was amazing. So, yeah, there's bringing Schnepp in, uh, getting heroes going. And then I departed AMC to start this thing with Lionsgate. Or I departed, it was, I was already with Collider, and I departed it to start this thing with Lionsgate. In, you know, in, in cooperation with Collider still. To start this show, I was working for Lionsgate, and I was going to start this show called Film HQ for Lionsgate's new streaming service, Comic-Con HQ, which didn't last long, but anyway. And I remember talking to the execs there, and I said, okay, I can do this, but I'm going to tell you right now, I need John Schnepp. So whatever it's going to cost to get John Schnepp to, to come here and do this, we need to have John Schnepp because we're going to talk about film fandom and stuff like that. We're going to talk about movies, particularly with a, on a Comic-Con network because the name of the network was Comic-Con HQ. We need John Schnepp here. And they gave me their blessing. They say, okay, okay, you put your team together however you want. Go ahead. And John Schnepp was the first guy I talked to. John Schnepp was the first guy I approached and said, we're going to do this thing with Lionsgate. I need you to be a part of it. And John Schnepp, was always down for talking about the things he loved. So John Schnepp was the very first guy that I brought on, um, onto film HQ. And it was great. I love, I, you know, I still might be most, most proud of that show out of any show that I've done. And John Schnepp is a big reason why, but it was a really fun show. And it's, it's how I first was able to hire a Josh McCuga who then came over. I was able to transfer him into uh, collider for a while. Uh, Haleta Alamu was amazing at it. Um, Oh, just a lot of people. A lot of people um, that were great on that, but it was Schnepp. I mean, it was Schnepp that I had to bring in first and, and make him, you know, be a cornerstone of that show. And he was on every episode. We had a lot of rotating guests, but John Schnepp was on every single episode, uh, which was great. I'm just going to wrap everything up here with it. Again, I just wanted to sit down and have a ca casual conversation about Schnepp and what he's meant and what he has represented to everybody. Um, as a fan and as a fan of him, I didn't just have the privilege of knowing John Schnepp and working with him. I was like many of you, I was a fan of John Schnepp, whether it was his amazing online work, whether it was his amazing documentary, the death of Superman lives, what happened, whether it was his amazing personality or his amazing knowledge or his amazing charisma or his amazing passion, whether it was the fact that he coined the phrase sweaties. And he was the king of the sweaties. He was the king of all fandom. And what fandom lost is unspeakable. Obviously nothing compared to Holly and, you know, John's family and what they lost. That goes without saying. But I can't think of anybody in my lifetime that has passed that meant so much to the fandom community, 
Because John Schnepp wasn't just some great filmmaker that we all looked at from a distance and adored. John Schnepp was in our homes. John Schnepp was a part of our fandom. John Schnepp was an integral part of the DNA of what we as fans and genre fans consider ourselves to be. He was part of that. And I'd like to say that, you know, life goes on and fandom goes on. But there's something about John Schnepp that as a fan and as a member of the fan community, we're never going to be able to get back. That's not me being pessimistic. That's not me being negative. It's just, it's true. There's a part of what it means to be a fan that we're never going to get back and will never be the same. And again, that pales in comparison to what, to what John's family is suffering. And yeah, yeah it, there's, that goes without saying. I mean, that's obvious. But I can't think of anybody to, alive today that we could lose that would have such a practical, tangible, real impact on the fan community. Because John didn't just enjoy having fans, he was fandom. He engaged in fandom. He was as big of a fan of things as you and I are big of a fan of. He was one of us. He wasn't one of the big movie star heroes, and there's nothing wrong with those dudes. Not, not, not at all. He was one of us. And one of those. It, it was weird. And he managed and he navigated that with such grace and authentic, authenticity and realism that it's just something that you can't replace. And I'd like to say, don't worry, guys. The sun will come up tomorrow. Um, life goes on, blah, blah, blah. And it will. But our fandom won't ever be the same. It won't ever be the same. John left us with a fandom that is far better because he was here. He left us with a fandom that is far better, far more enjoyable, and we understand fandom far better because he was here. And in that way, his impact is never going to go away. What I can say about Schnepp is this. And one of the best lessons I ever learned from him was this. Never be afraid to express your love. And he meant that in every sense. Like, dude, if there's somebody in your life you love, never fail to express that you love them. If there's something in your life that you love, express it. If you love Star Wars, express it. If you love this, express it and be unashamed about it. A lot of people, I mean, John Schnepp, he kind of developed, came up in the era where it's like, okay, you keep your geeky stuff to yourself, right? John Schnepp was, forget that. I love certain things and I'm going to be loud about my love for those things. And by being loud about the things he loved, he emboldened all of us to feel like we could be boisterous about the things we love too. And that is something of an impact that he made that it will never go away. Look, I, I could sit here and tell stories all day, uh, but I don't want to do that because uh, I'm getting into the uh, territory of self-indulgence at this point. But uh, I just want to do a, a little bit of video to express what he's meant. I mean, look, nobody in my career has been in more videos with me than John Schnapp. I, I've never had the privilege of being in more videos with any single individual than John Schnapp. John Schnepp is as big of a reason for me doing what I am today. I mean, I was doing it long before I met John, but he had such an influence on me. He, unbeknownst to him, was a teacher to me. And I think a lot of what I am today, the good and the bad, but a lot of what I am, or at least anything that's in me that's that's good on camera, anything that's in me that makes me a good, and any part that is a good YouTube video host or whatever, a lot of that was influenced by John Schnepp. A lot of the shitty stuff just comes from me. But any whatever good stuff is there, a lot of that good stuff was influenced by John Schnepp and was directly impacted by John Schnepp. 
And I know I've been getting tons of tweets from you guys about, I got back into comic, I hadn't bought a comic book in 15 years, and then I started watching John Schnepp on AMC Movie Talk, and I started watching Heroes, and, all, and he got me into buying comic books again. He helped me discover this and discover that, and that's the impact that he had. So I want to thank everybody um, for, number one, the support you've shown me through this. I thank you for that. I want to thank everybody for all the support they've shown everybody who's known John Schnepp. I want to especially thank you guys who have financially supported both John and his fiance Holly through the astronomical medical expenses and the bills that they're about to get hit with. It's unbelievable. I'm going to still put, look, yeah, John Schnepp has passed, passed away where he's not going to get better, but there is still that GoFundMe for John Schnepp because the medical bill, now that Holly's dealing with the loss of her fiance, the loss of the guy who has been the love of her life for the last 16 years is gone. Not only is she dealing with that, she's about to get hammered with an insane medical bill and she still needs her help. Schnepp still needs our help. So I am putting in the description of this video, the link to the GoFundMe page. Do me a favor. If you have not contributed yet, if John Schnepp has touched you in any way at all over the years, as a comic book fan, as a film fan, as a sweaty yourself, do me a favor. Just, just go drop $1. Go drop one buck or two or three or five or 50 or 500 or whatever you can. Um, you would be doing a lot so he knows that this, this medical thing, his passing isn't going to now financially ruin the love of his life for the rest of her life. Um, it would be awesome if you can do that. Again, I'm putting the link to that GoFundMe in the description below. Please click that and please go give whatever you can. It would be awesome if you did. So thank you so much. Um, yeah, I guess that's it for me. Uh, thank you guys for indulging me. Um, and you know, I raise uh, my glass to all of you, my fellow brothers and sisters uh, who were part of the Shweti Army. Uh, my fellow fans of John Schnepp, thank you for your support. Thank you for your support for Holly and supporting the GoFundMe thing. Thank you for being a fan of John Schnepp. We will never get back what we've lost in him, but we will never forget him either. So thank you so much for that. Uh, that'll do it for me, guys. Continue to share your thoughts, your favorite memories of John Schnepp. That would be great. Uh, my name is John Campia. Bye-bye.